very easy situation. First of all, because I'm not uh, able to totally replace Matt of Lottery. Uh, and secondly, because it's not just hard, but almost impossible to summarize the problems in Hungary related to uh, fundamental rights, freedoms, and European values. Um, so I won't try to uh, do this. Uh, instead of this, I will try to summarize um, uh, the Hungarian problems uh, very briefly uh, and highlight some elements of a written document uh, which titled is Disrespect for European Values in Hungary between 2010 and 2014, um, which, is a, which is a written material uh, written by four Hungarian NGOs uh, and uh, it's also available on, um, on some Hungarian NGOs web page. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, five or, or five topics. First of all, the independent institutions, elections, media issues, attack on NGOs, and the so-called everyday human rights issues. Uh, first of all, the rule of law requires the separation of powers, and um, it's also uh, indispensable that independent institutions function as checks uh, on the exercise of political power. Uh, I would like to refer to two the independent institutions. The first is uh, the, the court, uh, and especially on uh, the case of Boko. Uh, the former president of the Hungarian Supreme Court uh, was uh, discontinued three years before it expired, the term of, of office of the president of the Supreme Court, um, and uh, in, in violation of the European Convention of Human Rights. So in May last year, the European Court of Human Rights, in the case of Bakar Contra against Hungary, found that uh, this uh, premature termination of the president's mandate violated the right of access to a tribunal and also the president's right to freedom of expression uh, also had also been violated. Um, and um, just a preliminary remarks, I don't, the, the, the original title of this presentation that was Whose victory? And I don't want to say that one score on, on the government side and another score on the uh, EU institutions side. Uh, so just to, uh, just to summarize the cases. Uh, the other thing is that uh, many high-ranking senior judges had to retire and leave their offices without delay at the very, at the very beginning of 2012. And in November 2012, the European Court of Justice ruled that the lowering of judges' retirement age violated the EU uh, law. Although later Parliament, act, uh, Parliament uh, enacted a law that uh, allowed to the judges to return to their original positions, but most of them didn't avail themselves of the opportunity, given the, uh, given the undignified treatment they had been subjected to. And uh, the other uh, independent institution is uh, the Parliamentary Commissioner for Data Protection. Uh, this institution was abolished and the new Data Protection Authority was established. Um, and uh, in the case of uh, Mr. Andreas Jori, who was the Ombudsperson for Data Protection, uh, in April 2014, the European Court of Justice found this step to be in violation of EU law. But it's, um, I think it's important to emphasize that although uh, the European Court of Justice uh, said that uh, it's in contrast with the EU law, uh, but otherwise uh, Mr. Andreas Jori didn't get back uh, his office and the new authority is working now. Uh, some of you mentioned and referred to the elections and, uh, the, and the statement that uh, the last election in Hungary was free but not fair. And because I'm a junior researcher at the Media Policy Think Tank organization, I would like to refer to the, um, to the media case, media issues related to the um, campaign, and uh, especially the Fourth and the Fifth Amendment of the Fundamental Law, uh, because uh, the Fourth Amendment of the Fundamental Law created a very tricky situation that uh, in the campaign political parties can advertise themselves just uh, in the public broadcast media 
And after a big scandal, and uh, from, because of the protest from EU institutions, the Fifth Amendment of the Fundamental Law changed the situation, uh, according to which um, uh, commercial media outlet uh, can also advertise the political parties, uh, but for free. Uh, so you can, and obviously, because commercial televisions and media outlets uh, can um, can. Um, do business, can do profits from advertisement. No one will advertise any political parties in the campaign for free. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, the legislation um, were, well, was different, uh, but the effect and the situation is the same. Uh, so I think that this kind of legislation is a good example of how Orban governments uh, working. Uh, the second thing is the so-called media issues, and uh, in the program, you, uh, in the program, there's a session uh, which title is "What can the European Union do in case a member state?" Uh, and I would like to refer to the public broadcast media uh, because um, about um, 260 million euros, which is the annual budget of the public broadcast media in 2015. Uh, are being paid and uh, are, are being handled by the public broadcast media without uh, uh, almost any transparency. Uh, this money is spent without any transparency or the independent external control that the European Commission required uh, in principle. And I would like to emphasize that uh, the budget of the public broadcast media together with the budget of media authority is almost equal to the total budget of the Hungarian higher education. So it's a very huge amount of money. And uh, I think most of you uh, have a very uh, have, uh, have a knowledge about the Hungarian advertising sales tax. Uh, its main goal was to prevent RTI Club, one of the last autonomous national commercial television channels, to operate successfully by assisting the rival national television channel, which, uh, which was bought by politically affiliated players in 2013, to achieve a better economic position. The advertisement sales tax is a serious financial and administrative burden on several media enterprises, but uh, you, can, you, you can know that it was a totally discriminatory um, uh, tax because uh, um, 80% of the budget revenue from this tax is fed by uh, the RTI club. And now there's, uh, there, there are also some changes. Um, and we can, uh, we, um, how can I say? So we are not sure that this is the protest and the, the potential uh, procedure from the European Commission or uh, because the, 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 the editorial um, it, the editorial practice uh, changed a lot, uh, at least uh, I can say a lot, uh, uh, in, uh, in RTI2. So this is about media issues. Uh, I'm sure that you also uh, know a lot about the attacks uh, against uh, NGOs, uh, mostly who are operating the Norway grants. Um, uh, the governmental control office's audit report list uh, the alleged violations of law, but fails to provide evidence or references. Uh, and uh, it's also important that in parallel the Norwegian government maintained uh, its firm first position that the government control office has no powers to audit, audit the fund, uh, as that, is, that uh, is excluded by an international agreement. Uh, in September last year, 2014, two NGO fund operator organizations' offices were raided in the framework of a spectacular police action. Although procedures haven't been ongoing since spring, no concrete evidence of breaches of laws have been relayed. And I would like to refer to that uh, on this issue because I think that the EU uh, did or uh, have done the uh, not too much in this issue, uh, and I think that was one of the biggest scandal in Hungary, or one of the biggest scandal last year. Uh, and um, the, the last thing is the so-called everyday human rights issues. Uh, these issues have somehow just symbolic um, 
um, symbolic importance, um, but in some cases these are legal questions. I can mention the centralization of public education, uh, the culture policy of urban governments, the memorial policy, the case of Paksh, for example, in connection with the freedom of, in uh, of, of information. So it's a kind of endless list, uh, and I don't want to say that these are just everyday human rights issues, because uh, they are very important uh, violations um, related to some human rights. So I think uh, we should also, uh, also, also deal with these issues. Uh, I, I know that uh, this short presentation wasn't the best I've had ever had in my life, but I, I hope that it would be good for, uh, for, for brainstorming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric, and thank you for jumping in. That, that was a really brave and uh, courageous, and it was still very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Morten Pierum is the next speaker.